Hi, I'm Dr. Lyndon Walker. I've been using R for 26 years. I was taught to use R by Ross E. Harker, who was one of the creators of R. I make videos here on YouTube about R, statistics, AI, research, and sometimes some other random stuff. Please like and subscribe to keep updated on my latest videos. Today we are going to be looking at how to make word clouds in R. So R has a couple of different packages to make word clouds. There are two, one called Word Clouds and one called Word Clouds 2 that are the main ones. We're going to be using Word Clouds 2. So I have found in testing it that it can be a little bit buggy. There's a couple of functions that don't always seem to work, but it adds an extra lot of functionality that the Word Clouds package, the other one, doesn't have. So Word Clouds 2 is the one we're going to be using. I will link all of the code up on my website, so there'll be a link below to that. So I'm going to demonstrate how to make word clouds using some demo data that they already have in there. I'll look at a couple of different ways that we can change how those word clouds look and how we can export them as an image out of R or R Studio. Then going to look at how we might take some text data and process it so that we could use it with a word cloud. So I'm going to be using some friends transcripts from the friends package and we will go through some of how to set that up, extract the counts of the words so that we can create word clouds from it. So let's shift me out of the way and jump into our studio. So two packages that we need, word cloud 2 and tidyverse is always handy to have there for just general graphing and manipulating our data. So if we take a look at this demo data, we can see that it's just a data frame. It's got a variable called word with the different words and another one freq with the frequency, so how many times the words occurred. So to start with, we will just use this demo freq data to make some word clouds. And then once we've looked at a few different options, then I will show you how we might do this from a more raw, unstructured set of data where we've actually got to pull the words out. So the most simple thing we can do is just say word cloud 2, say what our data is, assuming it's in the structure. And we run that, and here we have our word cloud. You'll notice that as I run the cursor over it, this is actually a dynamic HTML image. It's not just your normal graph. So as I run my cursor over, I actually get the counts. So this is quite handy. This is one of the distinctions between Word Cloud and Word Cloud 2 is that it does this rather than just outputting an image. If we want to export it, then we can just export it as normal. A little bit later on, I will show you some code if we were trying to automate things and we needed some code to export it as well. There's a little bit more to it than just your normal export of an image because of the way that it is structured. Before we do that though, let's look at a couple of other visual options. So next step, uh, we can add in just a couple of options. One which will have just some random light colors for the words and background color of black. So we run that. And we can see that changes the look just a wee bit, the black background. Certainly for some presentations, maybe things like blogs as well. This is maybe a little bit nicer, stands out a little bit more clearly than the previous one. The positioning of the words is somewhat randomly done here, but we can actually set up particular angles. So here we can set up what rotations, and so in particular with this one, the min and max rotation are exactly the same, and we can set a ratio on that as well. And so when we do this, all of them, are going to be on the same angle. We can shake that up by changing these figures so that there's some variation between the min and the max and that will mix it up a little bit. We can use the shape function to actually get a particular shape. So rather than just a rectangle of our word cloud, there's a variety of different shapes that we can use. So star and circle are a couple of them. There is supposed to be the option to be able to use images that you provide. I found that that was a little buggy, so I haven't included the code for that one because it was just a little bit buggy. And when I searched online, I found that other people were having similar issues. 
could be something you can mess around with if you like but certainly with the star and circle those worked quite reasonably for size we're just shrinking down what the smallest counts can be so if we do a star uh, we can see there we need to actually export this to see the the full star it's just getting cut off by the framing there a little bit and so if we come over and we do circle instead the other thing I've added here is a slice max and so what I'm doing with slice max and this is why we needed the tidyverse was that we are just having the biggest 50. So slice max is just cutting off my data ordered by frequency and it's the biggest 50 frequencies. So we do this as a circle and we can see there is our circle with our top 50 words. So now we'll look at a slightly more complex example where we are actually having to extract the information. We don't have it already set up for us. So here we are going to use the library Friends, which has transcripts from the Friends TV show, and the library TM, which is a text manipulation library. So if you don't have either of these installed, we just come to Packages, click on Install, type the names of the packages in there, and we can install them. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to get our friends data. We are going to filter just so it's a single speaker. It has a whole transcript and the speaker variable we can filter to just get Ross. And then we're just going to select the variable that has the text in it. So there's other metadata in this friends data set. We just want to get the text. So when we run this, we are going to have sentences it's going to have 9,000 sentences that were spoken by Ross. We're going to then take the sentences and we're going to turn it into what's called a corpus. So there are a number of different ways we could be approaching this. We could use base R, we could use the tidyverse in order to do some more basic text manipulation. I wanted to share this instead because I think this is quite useful and powerful way of being able to start working with text data. And so for more complex text analysis, this is one of the main ways that we would approach it. So first step is a corpus. And so this is a slightly more complex object, takes a lot more information from our set of sentences. So we run that. If you like, you can go exploring. So you can see we've got a simple corpus. We've got the different meta information. We can go deeper into it to actually see how it's structured if we want. Once it's in a corpus, then we can use the different TM functions to be able to edit and remove bits and pieces. So we want to remove any digits, punctuation, and then strip white space. So this first step here is just cleaning out things because ultimately we just want a list of words and a list of counts. So we're going to go through this TM map. We can see again we've used Tidyverse just to send one into the next. We can run that. Uh, we can see that we get a warning message. These are just warnings, so that did work. It does give us a warning message just telling us what it has done. We can turn off those warnings if we want, but certainly we don't need to worry about them. These next two steps, we're going to turn everything into lowercase. Remember, R is case sensitive, so if we are doing anything with text, it will think at two different words. If one is a capital letter and one doesn't, it will treat them as two different words. So we'll change everything to lowercase. Again, with this TM map, does generate these warning messages. So our final step here, this one here in line 39, is a quite important one and one where you, for a messier data set, may need to work on it a little bit. And so this is where we remove the common words. So is and the and a uh and 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 all of those little joining words or words that get used frequency but aren't necessarily things where there's particular meaning to them. So there is a default list of words and we access those by saying stop words English. But you can add to this list. So rather than just having stop words English, you can actually get that. You can concatenate and add additional words as well. So if we do a word cloud and we see some words that are just common words, they're not actually useful or meaningful to what we're trying to do, then we can just add those to our custom stop words list and then we can rerun 
and we'll get a word cloud that has those ones removed. For the time being though, we're just gonna use Stop Words English, but that would be something we might wanna do is just either in here or in a separate line before we do this is just add any other words that seem to come up. So if we see that Ross in this case says particular words, but they're not really meaningful, then we can take those out. So we'll run that one. Then these next four lines, the term document matrix function is just pulling out all the words, getting the frequencies. So that happens at this step. We just turn what it produces into a matrix and then we sort it and then we turn it into a data frame. We could have actually merged a whole lot of that together. It's just maybe a little bit simpler, hopefully, to see that as four lines rather than putting the sort inside the data frame, the matrix inside that, the term document. We could put that all together as one if we want it. So we'll run these and we're going to end up with this thing df, which has that structure that we were after. So a list of words and a list of frequencies. Once we've run that, then we can make our word cloud and we're gonna limit it to the top 200 words in this case. Again, we might like to experiment with what that number is depending on what our word cloud looks like. So we run that one. And here we have from what Ross spoke through the whole series of friends. And there is these words like can and just and things that we might choose to go back and add to that stop words list. I would be quite tempted to do some of those. I can kind of picture him entering many, many scenes with, hey, so that's maybe not surprising. Kind of scanning through guys, Monica. It's all actually pretty, pretty boring. It's interesting when you run through each of the characters, quite how much is, is pretty mundane stuff. You can start to filter out some of these don't and right and like and just and stuff like that. We've got, there's Rach, I think somewhere, Rachel's hiding somewhere. There's Emily and a little tiny one there. So interesting that we don't see the names of a lot of the other characters all that prominently here. Anyway, it's something for you to experiment with. I really just wanted to show you how to be able to set that one up. Okay, final piece of code that I'm sharing, and we're not going to actually run through this, but I just wanted to show it to you, is if we wanted to set that up with code, uh, because we have this HTML widget here, then what we need to do is either use the HTML widgets uh, or WebShot to be able to export this. So if we want to save it as either a PNG or a PDF, we can use WebShop. You do need to install the WebShot package in order to do that. If you want to save it as HTML, we can use the package HTML widgets and then save widget. We'll save it and we can have that as a HTML file instead. So that's it for today, WordCloud 2. Found there was just a few little, few little bugs and a few things that didn't quite run right. And so I haven't included those in this video, uh, but hopefully I've shown you enough to be able to produce some interesting word clouds of your own. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon with more videos on our AI research stats and random stuff.